refresh yourself. Look, I know not all games are good. In fact, some are pretty terrible. And I know that eventually, I'm gonna have to talk about them. But there's enough negativity on YouTube already. There are so many angry channels, and I'd rather express my rage elsewhere. This channel isn't about negativity. It's about showing good things about games, but I know that not all games are good. So if I do have to talk about these games, I want to be constructive. Maybe there was something in the design or something in the execution that just was mismanaged. Maybe there's something good in these games that people are just overlooking, and maybe it's time we talk about it. Maybe there's a silver lining to this dark gray cloud. So if I am going to have to talk about these games, let's just be constructive. And I'm going to kick things off with a game that a lot of people vaguely recall, but don't really remember that thoroughly. The Dark Horse of the Capcom 5, PN03 for the Nintendo GameCube. Now don't assume that I'm defending PN03 or any other game I talk about in this series. I have no intention of justifying what are clear and present flaws for a game, because blindly justifying problems only conceals their roles as problems, usually quite poorly. Instead, I want to examine these problems, see why these problems exist, and suggest solutions that could possibly produce better execution for these games. Many games' issues exist because of lackluster execution as opposed to lackluster concept, and I'd much rather suggest solutions instead of defend problems. Piano 3 was part of the Capcom 5, five exclusive titles for the Nintendo GameCube developed by various sects of publisher Capcom. In an effort to court third-party support, Nintendo struck a deal with Capcom for five games to show they meant business in delivering fresh appeal outside of their core first-party franchises. Of the five games were Killer7, Beautiful Joe, Resident Evil 4, Dead Phoenix, and Piano 3. Piano 3 was the only one of the Capcom 5 that stayed GameCube exclusive as all other games were eventually ported to the PS2, or in the case of Dead Phoenix, outright cancelled. Piano 3 was directed by Resident Evil creator Shinji Mikami under the codename Jaguar, and in an effort to diversify its appeal from other Capcom properties, struck a sleek, clean sci-fi style. Piano 3 ultimately failed commercially, however, and the game eventually fell into the obscurity file of the GameCube, though parts of Piano 3's design would be revisited in Mikami's later game, Vanquish. The main setup of Piano 3 has the player shooting up robots to earn points, eventually leading to another room where you shoot more robots, collect items, or buy upgrades. A simple third-person shooting setup, Piano 3's main character Vanessa Schneider carries much of the game's aesthetic energy, using a dance beat to deliver a different kind of style from Dante or Leon Kennedy. Now before the constructive criticism, I want to say the things that Piano 3 got right. First, there's its main character. Vanessa Schneider is a brilliantly designed protagonist. Her movements have a purely Capcom style to them, this kind of swagger that makes her motions burst with energy. The animations for her attacks and gymnastic dodges are quite good, especially the more powerful energy drive attacks. The way she moves her body and drums her fingers makes it appear she's listening to music through headphones as she blasts robots a new one. It makes for a very stylized game, one that has its own identity beyond Capcom's other icons. It's a confident sense of poise that's become kind of a staple in contemporary Japanese game development, a command over a totally identifiable vibe. She's different, obviously, but she encapsulates what Capcom was doing during that age. They were being all about style. The upgrade system is also very Capcom as well, featuring individual stat upgrades and even new abilities unlocked through purchased Igus suits. The incentive to earn points and rack up combos is driven by these upgrades, so you routinely have a goal to work toward. The store you buy them from is routinely available, and with trial missions that dole out the cash at good, solid intervals, there's a consistent stream of advancement. I also dig the electronic-infused soundtrack, which features mixes of big beat and techno that also stand out in the Capcom library. 
funky bass slaps, rapid drums, and calculated percussion emit a futuristic vibe, while not being trapped in its own era. It's very enjoyable overall. However, Piano 3's problems are actually quite plentiful, which is not something I'm thrilled with saying, as someone who's a big fan of stylized action games like this. The shooting is probably the most apparent. Your main energy shot reacts to an auto-lock, which, while precise, isn't 100% reliable. Vanessa is unable to move while shooting, and there's no default automatic option. This means that most of your game is standing at a stop while hammering away at the fire button. It's a very exhausting process that could have easily been remedied by a default automatic option. Even so, enemy confrontations are notably lacking dynamics. While I praise the different quirks certain enemy types have, like proximity bombs or high-impact rocket attacks, Vanessa herself doesn't have any real extra moves aside from her default blast. Sure, it can be upgraded and the energy drive special attacks add a punch, but you're often trapped in an extremely repetitive cycle of stagnant firing. If Vanessa had any additional techniques for more advanced projectiles or even a melee move, I think the firefights could have been much more interesting in practice. Defense is also a tiring element of Piano 3. The main defensive mechanic is a dodge mapped to the shoulder buttons. Now let me just say that I'm a tremendous fan of the GameCube controller, especially with its now forgotten analog shoulder buttons, which made games like Super Mario Sunshine operate so well in their own ways. However, while I very often miss these types of trigger buttons, they just don't work for immediate rapid action inputs. It's here where you need a typical digital trigger like the DualShocks R1 and L1. They're quick and responsive, perfect for on-the-mark dodging. In the case of Piano 3, the GameCube's analog L and R buttons feel soft and imprecise, so there's a very brief delay that you need to compensate for when dodging enemy attacks. It's a rhythm that's possible to ultimately adjust to, but if Capcom found a more applicable way to implement dodging, these moments wouldn't feel so improperly paced. Perhaps the use of the C-Stick to dodge, or even a Devil May Cry combo of a button press and dodge would have been better. Camera control also becomes a severe issue based on the room construction. Most rooms aren't compatible with the kind of game Piano 3 aims to be. It's essentially a third-person cover shooter, a shallow and very simplistic one, but still a third-person cover shooter nonetheless. Sadly, very few rooms accommodate for the use of cover. You rarely see proper cover aside from a wall or extremely infrequent item, so you're often at the mercy of ill-timed projectiles and dodges to avoid damage. But because of Vanessa's way of attacking and targeting, it's easy to have environmental objects block your line of fire. Even Vanessa herself gets in the way of the player's view of enemies, so it's difficult to know when an enemy's energy blasts are incoming. To fix this, I'd suggest Vanessa to lean a bit more when attacking, or better yet, providing a camera that allows for more direct control, as the C-Stick only does an awkward perspective lean or dip as camera control. Even so, Vanessa can only run in a straight line, requiring stiff camera tilting in order to get any kind of fluid motion. Jumping is a pain in platforming situations due to only allowing forward or backward options, and overall, Piano 3 feels so much stiffer and more restrictive for the kind of game it aims to be. I'm actually a bit surprised that Piano 3 didn't implement some kind of rhythm game element, as Vanessa's beat-driven actions echo a kind of dancing club pulse. In fact, the way she attacks and moves feels like a step-by-step -step dance routine. Quick motions to beats in a rhythmic shooting pace scream rhythm game. And while it would obviously require a heavy amount of design and mechanic retooling to put into action, I still can't help but be curious as to how Piano 3 would play with more emphasis on its own musical style. But these control problems aside, Piano 3 just feels dull. Its sterile room design desperately needed some variety, both in color and mood, while the enemy designs don't mix up confrontations enough. Probably my biggest complaint with Piano 3 isn't its controls or its aesthetic. It's just how much damage the enemies take. These things are just sponges for damage, and between a shooting setup with such a lack of movement combined with the by-the-book level structures, the whole thing drags on so long. Even when enemies mix up their tactics a bit with unique moves, they still take so many hits to die that any sense of pacing and momentum is brought to a halt. The bosses are easily the worst offenders here, with enormous health bars and movement patterns that make attacking inconsistent. There's nothing worse than a boss that totally prevents you from attacking it during certain periods of a fight.
everything in Piano 3 feels stricter and more rigid than it should be, so it's difficult to see what exactly caused the idea to fail. As someone who instantly fell in love with this game's stylistic and confident aesthetic, I feel bad dissing it. It could have been another Capcom classic in the making. Most of the problems seem to stem from this rigidness and restrictive adherence to coloring inside the lines. I couldn't help but compare it to future games from Mikami and his colleagues at their contemporary outlet of Platinum Games. Vanquish and Bayonetta clearly attained the same command over their style and energy that PNO3 could have achieved. Their focus on agility and the joy of motion made them powerful and energized, the antithesis of what PNO3 became. For a game so focused on rhythm, PNO3's main fault is restriction, locking the player in and giving them too little breathing room to feel like the over the top dancer that Vanessa clearly is. While I doubt Capcom will give the franchise a revival, I hope that, in some way, there's a way to salvage the ideals of PNO3. It's another case of misplaced style. Trust me, I'm not a fan of bringing this kind of bitter critique to the channel, but I think that any game should have some form of constructiveness in its evaluation. PNO3 just seems like a victim of flawed execution, so I'm hoping that some game is able to bring its core ideals back. Maybe a spiritual successor. Someday? Maybe. I'm Alex Postesmera Carlson, and remember, stop it. <laughs>